start with meditation is because I think meditation lays a solid um, foundation for the, the spiritual science of hypnosis. <clears throat> so we'll start with a meditation. And again, just to confirm, you guys can hear me okay, yes? And if in, at any point you can't, please let me know. I will adjust accordingly. So without further ado, get comfortable, feet flat on the floor, spine as erect as you can make it, comfortably speaking. Again, make sure things are on do not disturb, hands in a comfortable position, and whenever you're ready, you can close your eyes. Beginning to bring your awareness to your breath, in through your nose, out through whatever feels most natural and normal. And all we are doing here is quieting the mind so that we can all be present. And in honor of quieting the mind, let us use a little affirmation. So every time you exhale, I want you to affirm the word release. Every time you exhale, in your mind's eye, to yourself, affirm the word release. In through your nose, and release. Really emphasizing the letting go sensation of the release, where you release the breath, you release all physical tension from the body, feeling your muscles loosen up. You release all attachment to the mind. And as you let go of the mind and the body, you become this formless energy. And as you become this formless energy, you simultaneously become free and limitless. Once you are ready 
to transform, to become who you want to be. Let that be your cue to gently open your eyes. I'm having to force anything, but once you are ready to give yourself an amazing experience, regardless of what I say or don't say, or do or don't do, let that be your cue to open your eyes. Take as much time as you need. superpower. It's the greatest skill you can cultivate 
while you are living here, the second skill is communication. If you can cultivate the skill of feeling however you want to feel, and then you can communicate, or then you can cultivate the communication skill, then you just, you've got the master key to life. So we have to have that foundational understanding that what we are experiencing is being influenced by the perception or the glasses we are wearing. So perhaps it, it might be a good idea to, to speak to like um, how our perception is created. <clears throat> so let me take a couple breaths and tune into how I would like to describe that. Yeah, what comes through is this um, this explanation of uh, parallel realities. Has anybody studied parallel reality theory? Beautiful. So coming back to, to using an analogy, there are infinite experiences we can tune into right here, right now. And by shifting our state of being, by shifting our emotional state, it will influence and determine what version of reality we experience. So if you were to again imagine you were on a highway and there's eight lanes, that's a massive highway, so let's make this a little bit more realistic. There's four lanes on the highway, four lanes on the highway. Each lane is kind of a symbolic to a different reality. So one lane might be um, a lane where you feel wildly confident and abundant. Another lane might be where you feel insecure. Another lane might be where you feel wildly abundant and confident and, and madly connected and in love with people. Another lane, they're all just different, right? And when you're driving on this highway, these four lanes, if you just look to your right, the lane doesn't look drastically different. But if you were to wait or continue to drive on that highway for 10 more miles, however long that takes, those lanes begin to veer off drastically, where the confident, abundant, energetic state, emotional state, is going to start veering off to the left in a few miles. The, the lane directly to the right of it just starts going straight. The other lane just has you do a complete U-turn. Once you shift realities right here, right now, you don't notice much, much change in your immediate like physical reality. But if you're able to maintain that state of being for a prolonged period of time, in a few miles, your, your physical reality will look drastically different. So what determines the reality that you're going to experience uh, later today or tomorrow or next month is the state of being you are currently in and how you can shift your state of being, which is the most important question to ask ourselves, is where we are placing our focus. That's what shifts our state of being. And any state of hypnosis, which is just a, an energetic state of deep relaxation, but any state of hypnosis, you are far more free to jump lanes when you're in your conscious mind, okay, if we were to separate the mind, you got the conscious, the subconscious. If you're operating in the, the feeling state, the energetic state of your conscious mind, it is a lot harder to change lanes quickly. Because your conscious mind, the way it works is it is very analytical and rational. It's the mind that I'm speaking to right now. It's the mind that is quite literally judging every word that is coming out of my mouth. This guy sounds good, this guy sounds stupid, he's very handsome, he doesn't look handsome. Whatever that judgment is, you're just analyzing, 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 this guy has no fucking idea what he's talking about, blah, 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 what am I gonna eat for dinner, blah, 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 blah. You're just judging, analyzing, comparing my words to the most recent book, the most recent book you read on the power of mind, or comparing my words to your past experiences, <clears throat> and because that's how the conscious mind works, it's very difficult to experience a drastic change quickly. Because 
if I were to speak to your conscious mind and, and suggest that you are confident, for example, um, perhaps we can use other people's examples a little bit later, but we'll keep it very simple to begin with. But if I were to suggest to your conscious mind that you are confident and you can stand on stage and you can speak freely, your conscious mind might say, bullshit, Drew, I tried that last week and I felt wildly uncomfortable. But if we are able to use self-hypnosis, and I'm going to simplify all this in a moment, just kind of giving us some context here. But if we were to use self-hypnosis, does this thing keep moving on me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. If we were to use self-hypnosis to get you out of your conscious mind and into your subconscious mind, it is very, very easy to experience to, to quite literally become an entirely different person. Because your subconscious mind is not analytical at all. It, it does not rationalize anything. It either 100% accepts something to be true or it just rejects it. And something that's really important uh, to note and to be aware of, when you're in that subconscious state, Nobody can, can make you believe something you don't want to believe. Nobody can make you think something you don't want to think. Hypnosis is, is not the mind control. It is just providing this, this very, it's providing the safe space in the, in the experience of just being completely relaxed and free and completely transcending the mind and the body, which those are the two things that limit us more than anything else. Um, <clears throat> I lost my train of thought. Uh, I'll take a couple breaths. Friend here. Mm, can somebody remind me what I was just saying? We are talking about states of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So it's very irrational. So if I were to suggest to your subconscious mind that you are confident, you can get on stage and you can speak, if that is something that you are truly yearning for and it feels in alignment with your best life ever, you're going to accept it to be true and it's going to instantaneously shift the way that you feel. And because it instantaneously shifts the way that you feel, meaning it shifts your, your, your vibration, your frequency, you now begin attracting different thoughts, thoughts that empower you, thoughts that uh, allow you to be more abundant in your thinking, thoughts that uh, allow you to be uh, sensitive and receptive to opportunities that have been right in front of you that perhaps you just haven't noticed because you've been in this lower frequency. Mm -hmm. So the real master key here, I love that there's a key right over my head. How cool is that? The real master key here is taking ownership of your focus. Because wherever you focus go, wherever your focus goes, as the saying goes, your energy flows. And the only reason we ever experience obstacles in our life, the only reason we ever experience doubt is because we are focused on obstacles, we are focused on doubt. You can quite literally transcend the obstacles that appear so real by simply shifting your focus. Because the moment you shift your focus, you become receptive to that path that you didn't even know was possible. So what I'd like to do now, before we practice self-hypnosis, I want to take us through a little visualization exercise for you to become a little bit more familiar with your greatest life ever. So that's what we're going to start with. Um, and again, this is this is not hypnosis. This is not mind control. This is me just providing this opportunity for you to wake up to where you want to go. Does anybody have any questions with anything that I've shared thus far before we continue? If so, just raise your hand. If not, then take ownership of where your focus goes and give yourself the experience that you want. No questions. Okay, let's do a little exercise then. 
So this is not hypnosis. The intention of this exercise is to get you familiar um, with what your best life looks like. And this exercise alone can be very, very transformative. And we'll want to do this with our eyes closed. <clears throat> so whenever you're ready, get comfortable, feet flat on the floor, spine erect, and begin to bring your focus to your breath. And this time, let us affirm on the inhale, let us affirm a word that you associate with the feeling of being energized. So perhaps that word is energy or life force or whatever it is, but every time you inhale, affirm it and then give yourself the experience of energy. Giving that to yourself now. Now in a moment, not yet, I'm going to ask that you create an image or a vision of you standing in a long hallway and at the very end of the hallway, there's going to be a bright red door. So go ahead and create that image or that vision now. Of you standing in a hallway, and at the end of that hallway, there's a bright red door. Just simply notice what the hallway looks like. Now in a moment, I'm going to ask that you walk through the hallway, and you're just going to notice what you see on the walls, what you see on the ground. And then you're just going to pause a few feet in front of the door. And then I will instruct you with further steps. So if you haven't done so already, begin to walk through that hall now. Just noticing the sights, the sounds. Noticing if there's other people or if you're alone. Standing in front of that bright red door. Now in a moment, not yet, I'm going to count up from the numbers one to three. And when I get to the, the number three, that's going to be your cue to open that door and to walk through that doorway. And on the other side of that doorway is going to be your life exactly one year from today where you are living your best life ever. It's going to be a year of just miracles, a year of consistent, effortless, soul-aligned action, a year of joy, a year of freedom, a year of health. And you're going to step into where you're at a year from today, where you show up 365 days, aligned, free, and so happy. So we'll begin that count up in just a moment. Starting with the number one, feeling that excitement, that eagerness to see what is on the other side. Two, extending your hand, grabbing the handle or the knob. Three, opening that door and just walking through and just noticing where you're at. Noticing if there's other people there. Noticing what you're doing. Just noticing everything you need to notice. I'll give you about 20 seconds to simply walk around and take in a good look of what your life looks like. A life of, or what your life looks like in a year of being bold, of being confident, of being the best you. more moments here, taking it all in, noticing all the sights and the sound. So whenever you're ready, releasing the image or the vision from your mind's eye. And whenever you're ready, Open your eyes, bring yourself back here now. And if you feel if you feel inspired, once you open your eyes, if you notice anything um, noticeable, feel free to take out your phone and write down some of the things that you saw so you can remember. Did anybody? 
anybody notice anything remarkable or anything worth noting, worth sharing or talking about? If so, the floor is yours and you can share. If not, I love silence. Let's talk about the practice of self hypnosis. Welcome, excited to have you. Uh, I've been recording this whole thing, so if you want the first half of this, just message me or come talk to me afterwards. And let's get to it. Mm, let's take a couple breaths here in the room. So what I want to do now is walk us through the process that all hypnotic journeys take us through so that we can reverse engineer it to be your own. So it's something that you can begin using on an everyday basis to quickly shift the way that you feel, to release the things that are no longer serving you, to take ownership of your focus and your energy so that you can give yourself a brand new experience, one that is far more in alignment with what you want to create. So I'll walk us through this three-step process, um, and then I will take us all through it so that you can go home and you can use it yourself, and then I'll give some instructions of how I, I think it's best used. healing 
transformative. What's that even about? Uh, transformative um, power of, of being present is, is when you are present, there's no being caught up in the future. When you are present, there's no being tangled up by your past. It is this pure, limitless potential here now. So step one is clean up. The way you can do that is you can close your eyes, kind of like what we did a little bit earlier. Um, you can close your eyes and just affirm the word release. Doing that two or three times will give you enough presence that you need to transform and to take ownership of your feeling. You don't need all that much. You just need a breath or two that will bring you here now. So clean up, you release, you presence yourself. Tune up is this this practice of energetically aligning yourself with the uh, the state of your wish fulfilled. So to kind of um, take a couple steps back, we have to, we have to be really honest with ourselves in regards to what we want in our life. We have to be uh, very clear with what we want in our life. And once we are clear with what we want in our life, we have to have the, the maturity to recognize that we don't actually want that physical thing. We want the emotional state that we associate with the obtainment of that thing. And that requires a, a radical level of maturity, and it's kind of a very nuanced thing. We don't actually want the physical thing to, to be in our life. It's simply a pointer for us to wake up to the feeling state that we want. And if we're able to give ourselves that feeling state, then that thing will eventually come into our life. But by that point, we don't even care if it's there or not. And we're just so free, we're so dialed in, that whatever does appear is perfect, and it's amazing, and we're always supported, we're always guided, we're always loved. So tune up. And then the, the third one, which I'm really excited about, I don't know how this is going to happen in here, um, ACT UP. Okay, so ACT UP, ACT UP is quite literally getting your body in motion. It's quite literally uh, beginning this process of moving. So when you tune up, you are using, uh, like you become this very, very powerful energetic field. And the, the more you do it, the, the better you get at it. The better you get at it, and the more intense your emotions begin to shift instantaneously. But you can go from feeling terrible, insecure, brokenhearted, uh, depressed, to feeling so confident, so free, very quickly. And it's a very, it's an intense shift. And so what we have to do is we have to act up. We have to leverage this newfound energy to begin to move our body and begin to act in, in alignment with whatever we just embody. Because a huge mistake us in the personal development world get into is we, perhaps we meditate, perhaps we, we visualize and we imagine our most confident self as, as dominating, winning, succeeding, loving, uh, but then we open our eyes and we just continue to, to do whatever we were doing prior to that, and it really halts the, um, the, the magnetic pull that your energy could potentially have. To super accelerate that attraction, you have to move, you have to move, you have to move. I mean, it's very strange, especially in the spiritual world, this, this like, uh, um, what's the word, like this discomfort with acting. There's so much power in acting. There's so much power in doing. So what that looks like um, is once you've done that embodiment, you, you open your eyes, you now feel differently. You know you did it right when you quite literally feel differently. It might have taken you from like on a scale of one to 10, perhaps you were at a zero before you did it, perhaps it took you to like a three. But whatever that increase is, is better than being at that zero. Perhaps it took you to a 10 out of 10. The intention for today is by the end of it is to get us all at a 10 out of 10. Um, so regardless of where you're at, we just want to progress. That's the most important thing. Um, but then we want to move, we want to act, uh, and that literally means getting up, jumping up and down, jump jacks, squats, whatever, Whatever comes natural, you just quite literally, it's a, I suppose it's easier said than done for some people, but you, you have to like kind of transcend the mind and the body. It's a, it's a prerequisite. In order to transcend the mind and the body, you gotta transcend the mind and the body. In order to, to be happy, you gotta be happy. You gotta do the thing before the thing happens. Anyways, um, you quite literally get up and begin to move, dance, jump up and down. So we're going to do that today. Um, at the very end of this self-hypnotic journey that I'm about to take us on. Um, and 
and I want it to feel fucking insane. I want it to feel like one of the most liberating things. I trust the Invisible City has that kind of vibe here where you guys are kind of tuned into that, that world of like moving your body in a very liber liberating way. So I think that's really, really rad. Um, but <clears throat> one of the things that I like to, to share whenever I'm working one-on-one -on -one, uh, and when we're doing like this very transformative uh, journey in hypnosis is if somebody wants to look at you while you're going through this process, just like a, a random pass, passerby, if somebody wants to look at you, I want them to think to themselves, yo, this person belongs in an insane asylum. I want them to think you are absolutely out of your fucking mind and you are entirely delusional. Because in order, in order to go from being depressed to being empowered, in order to go from just feeling a little restricted to feeling free, you have to give yourself that delusional ability to completely just jump and transform your energetic state right here, right now, before you ever get any approval or permission. Before the person tells you they love you, you've got to feel that love just flowing through you. Before that million dollars hits your bank account, you've got to feel that right here, right now. And if you're constantly waiting around for the things to happen before you give your feelings, say, you're just quit, you're on a hamster wheel. It's doing life backwards. It's very, very frustrating, and we all know that. You don't need me to tell you. So clean up, tune up, act up. I'm gonna walk us all through this experience right here, right now. And like I alluded to in the very beginning of this, I believe, um, this is you doing it to yourself. Uh, and this, Honestly, uh, this only works for true earnest seekers. Like if you truly are ready for change, you will give that to yourself right here, right now. And if you feel any hesitation of like, am I ready to change? Well, you can just choose to say, yeah, I'm ready to change. You can, you can actually choose that as well. So many things that we can give ourselves. Take a couple more breaths here to see what else I would like to add before we really begin the journey. Mm -hmm. I suppose a couple things. Um, it's okay, it's natural, it's normal to kind of feel like you're playing along with this. There's, there's no there's no need to like resist my guidance. There's no need. It's not gonna serve any of us here. Uh, so if you if you truly are ready to feel the confidence, to feel the freedom, to feel the power, uh, to feel the vitality, the energy that you seek, then allow my words to guide you right there. You don't need to wrestle me. Just allow the guidance to, to influence you. Um, me me guiding you to this amazing place. This isn't like me. Uh, overpowering you. It's just like, yo, you're doing this, and I'm just providing a safe space. Um, so it, it can and it should uh, feel like a, a little acting. If we're being honest with ourselves, we're, we're just constantly acting. We're just constantly putting on some, some facade. Uh, some facades are a little bit more aligned to our true self than others. Uh, so why not just go all in on acting uh, as our best self right here, right now? with the information that we have. Our best self might be drastically different tomorrow or in a week. So just using the awareness that you have right now, what does your best self look like? And tapping into that. Okay, I think we're ready. Um, does anybody have any questions before we, uh, before we start? Well, we'll call it the hypnosis portion of this. Does anybody have any questions, curiosities before we get going? If so, speak up. Yes, ma'am. Um, how is it trouble me to be the question in that? Yeah, 
couple things come up. I think that uh, it's a real gift of yours, honestly, because many of us, we get caught up in the visions, uh, forgetting that the most important thing is being crystal clear with the feeling. That's the most important thing. Um, so it truly is a gift that you have this, this uh, I don't want to call it a problem, but this experience. One thing that could potentially help, uh, as I guide you through this process of, hey, look at look at the most successful, right? If you quite literally just speak to yourself the words that I am saying, and you're just verbatim saying back to yourself the words that I am suggesting to you, that might not necessarily make things visual for you, but it will make things more experiential for you so that you can begin to actually um, move your energy and uh, align with this, this end state. Um, so don't worry about the details and, and the, the intricacies of the images or the visions that come up. And instead, just, just following the words. Is that practicable or, or practical enough of a answer to your question, or do you have any more probing there? Um, I thought it's okay if you say that, but I feel like I can't find it nice to be to myself because I don't know. No, it doesn't, yeah, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So the experience can be done if I don't want to just Correct. be focused on something. Um, Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Great question. Does anybody else have any questions, curiosities before we begin? If so, speak up. So there's no right or wrong way to, to experience this. Just allow yourself to feel whatever comes up. Allow yourself to imagine or visualize whatever comes through, not having to analyze or uh, understand any of it, and instead just giving yourself this, this gift of, of being present, of being guided, of being loved and supported. Um, a couple of things added to that. Whenever I do suggest, whenever I do say, and encourage you to feel something, uh, then allow yourself to feel that, okay? Unless you feel like it's not in alignment with what you want, then say no. But if it's something that sounds cool to you, then let me feel that. Uh, whenever I ask you to imagine or visualize something, allow whatever to come up to come through. Again, not having to worry too much about the details. Um, and what I think is the most important, and it, uh, it really frustrates me when people don't get this, um, but I get it, so I don't take it personal, um, is giving yourself that gift of being completely delusional, 
just here, just now, like whenever you leave this room, you can be rational, you can make sure everything is taken care of, kids are fed, the, the bills are paid, but just for like the next however long, 20 or so minutes, just allow yourself to be completely childlike, completely delusional, allowing yourself to make believe anything to be true. And you know you're doing that um, properly. There's there's levels to it. It's not like you're doing it or you're not doing it. There's, there's levels. There's like one through 10. You know you're at a 10 out of 10 when your body just feels this electricity pumping through you. I feel complete. We'll, we'll get into it. Uh, I might get uh, very, very uh, energized up here. So I might be screaming. I might not. I don't know. Um, but at some point, at the end, we're going to get out of our chair. We're just going to move. And there's zero expectations of, of, of this whole moving process. Uh, so if you just want to stand, just fucking stand. If you want to walk, just fucking walk. If you want to jump up and down, if you want to hit your chest, if you want to scream, just do that. Just allow whatever wants to come through to come through. Okay. So without further ado, we're going to go through a little self-hypnosis. Um, and we're going to start with our eyes open. Feet flat on the floor. Hands on your thighs. And I want you to <clears throat> find a spot on the wall behind me on like a 45 degree angle. So you've got to slightly lift your chin up. I want you to find a spot. The spot can be real or imaginary. But I want you to find a spot. And I just want you to focus your eyes on that one spot. And now that you have that spot, just harnessing your attention on that one spot. And if your eyes begin to wander, that's natural. That's normal. You just bring them right back to that one spot. As you are focusing on that one spot, start to become aware of your breath. Inhaling through your nose, expanding your diaphragm, and then exhaling through whatever feels most natural and normal. And we're just going to take a few progressively bigger breaths. So begin to really expand that diaphragm, that next breath, still focusing on that one spot. If the eyes begin to blink a little bit more than normal, that's natural. Allow the eyes to blink, still focusing on that one spot. Let's do two more big breaths. Big inhale, expand, expand, expand. Big release, still focusing on that one spot. Let's take in one big breath, one final breath, and you're going to hold your breath at the top for five seconds. Big inhale, big inhale, big inhale, holding for five, holding your breath for four, three, two, one, releasing your breath. As you release your breath, allow your eyelids to shut. And as you release that breath, releasing all tension in the body. And step one is clean up. So that is what we will do now. So in a moment, not yet, I'm going to ask that you shift your focus to the top of your head. And as you shift your focus to the top of your head, that part of your body will feel relaxed. Because for the sake of this exercise, wherever your energy goes, the energy is going to flow in the form of relaxation. So setting that intention now, in a moment you will shift your focus to the top of your head. And as you do so, that part of your body will just loosen up, just letting the tension go. So go ahead and do that now if you haven't done so already. Shift your focus to the top of your head and just notice this wave of relaxation taking over your scalp, letting all that tension go and shifting that focus down your forehead now. Like this, this molasses of relaxation just melting over your head, shifting the focus down your forehead and your eyes and your nose and this wave of relaxation continues to flow down your ears and your jaw, giving yourself that gift of just releasing, shifting that focus and that wave of relaxation down your neck. And as you relax your neck, it's natural and it's normal to have the urge to swallow. So simply allow your neck to relax completely, shifting the focus down your shoulders, 
And that wave of relaxation continues to take over your entire body. Just dropping, just dropping. Shifting that focus down your biceps, your triceps, your elbows, all the way down your forearms, releasing all the tension. Shifting that focus down your fingertips. Just letting go, letting go so that we can grow. Shifting that focus back to your chest and feeling your chest just soften, soften and loosen up. Shifting that focus down your torso, your stomach. Just let the tension in your stomach completely fade away now. Shifting your focus down your hips, releasing all the tension there. Shifting your focus down your thighs and your knees, through your shins, and all the way to the tips of your toes. Letting go, letting go, letting go. And I want you to bring your focus back to your eyelids. Doing that now. And I want you to imagine or visualize or feel what it would be like for your eyelids to be so relaxed that they felt like they were cemented shut. Imagine, visualize, or feel what it would be like for your eyes to be cemented shut and for you to not be able to open up your eyelids. And once you were 100% confident that if you were to try to open up your eyelids and that they wouldn't even budge even the slightest, once you were 100% confident in that, you can go ahead and try to open up your eyelids. And just notice how that feels. And you can stop trying, bringing your focus back to the sound of my voice. Just feeling that calm, feeling that ease as you continue to shift realities into a reality of peace, of tranquility. We're going to do one more exercise in honor of cleaning up, in honor of being fully here, tapping into the limitless nature of your true self. So in a moment, not yet, I'm going to ask that you imagine, you visualize, you feel yourself looking down a flight of stairs. And there's going to be 10 steps looking down. There's going to be 10 steps going down. You don't have to worry about the details. Just notice whatever comes up. So go ahead and do that now, creating the image, the vision, the feeling of you looking down a flight of stairs. And you can feel that looking down sensation throughout your entire body, because that's what you give yourself now. And in a moment, I'm going to count down from the numbers 10 to 1. And with each descending number I count, in your mind's eye, in your feeling state, you're going to take one step down that staircase. And each step you take will cause your mind and your body to drop deeper and deeper into the stillness of the present moment, into the perfection of the present moment. Each step you take will cause your mind and your body to feel more relaxed, dropping deeper and deeper and deeper into your subconscious mind, setting that intention now, starting that countdown with the number 10, just dropping into your subconscious. Nine, already noticing a massive shift in how you feel. Eight, drifting away. Seven, melting into the chair. The body becomes so limp that if you were to try to move your body, you couldn't even move it. Seven, drifting away in the spiritual like heaven. Six, deeper and deeper. Not having to understand it, but simply giving it to yourself. Five, twice as deep as you were just moments ago. Four, deeper and deeper. You drop, staying awake throughout. Three, drifting away to so peaceful. If there's any lingering tension, just drop it. One, completely free. And now that we have cleaned up the attachment that we may have had to any expectations or any past experiences, what we want to do, because we are now in this subconscious brainwave state, now what we want to do is we want to release anything that is holding us back, anything that is weighing us down. So before we do that, I want you to just tune in 
in between your own ears and ask yourself earnestly, honestly, what are the storms, what are the fears, what are the beliefs, the narratives that are slowing me down that I am willing to let go of once and for all today? Just tune into that and just notice what comes up. It might be in the form of images, visions, words, feelings, but just notice whatever comes up. Because in a moment, we're going to go through the process of ridding those things from your entire mind-body complex. And they will no longer be a part of who you are. But before we do that, articulate, shine a light on what you are going to let go of today. You know it's been holding you back. You're worthy regardless, but you know you want to let it go. And so in a moment, I'm going to count down from 10 to 1. And whatever came up for you, that thing will fade away from your body. It will sweat away. It will vanish, evaporate, disappear. So by the time we get to the number one, it will no longer be a part of your experience. You might be able to reflect on the fact that you used to have it, but right now, you will not feel it, energetically so. Setting that intention now, giving yourself that gift of spontaneous releasing. Beginning that countdown, starting with the number 10, just releasing and letting go. The doubts, the fears, the insecurities, drop them. They are not yours to carry. Nine, come on, taking this to the next level today because you can Eight, releasing more and more and more. And just noticing as you release it, your body begins to shift. Your breath begins to shift. You begin to feel lighter. Perhaps intense emotions come up. It's all natural. It's all normal. Eight, seven, feeling lighter and freer. Those stories, those doubts literally just fade away like smoke, like sweat. Seven, six, come on. Five, letting it go today. Four, three, if you're carrying anything, drop it now. Three, two, drop it now. One, like a blank sheet of paper, limitless, formless. It is time to tune up. It is time to embody. It is time to energetically align with the state of your wish fulfilled. And the way we are going to do that is in a moment, not yet, I'm going to ask that you create this image or this vision of you looking at the healthiest, happiest, most successful you. He or she's going to be standing directly in front of you. And you're going to notice everything you need to notice about them. Perhaps it's vivid images and visions, perhaps it's intense feelings. You'll notice whatever you need to notice about them. And if you haven't done so already, create that image, that vision, that feeling now. You are looking at the most successful, the happiest, the most loving, the most passionate you, the most creative, the healthiest you. He or she is seeing you right in front of you. And just take it in, oh my goodness. Notice their beauty. Notice the energy that radiates from their body. Notice their facial expressions. Notice their posture. Notice the way they breathe. Notice that just by looking at them, you can pick up on their thoughts and their beliefs and the stories they tell themselves. So notice what those are. Notice the most important thing. Listen to me carefully. Notice that the only thing that is different between the person sitting down and the person standing in front of you, the only thing that is different is a shift in attitude and behavior. Everything else is the exact same. You are looking at yourself. That version of you has a different attitude and behavior. So what that means is, in order to create his or her life, to achieve to have to be the person they are, all we have to do is align our attitude and our behavior with theirs. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So in a moment, this is going to be one of the most visceral 
physical experiences you have had in your entire life. In a moment, I'm going to count up from the numbers one to three. And when I get to the number three, that's going to be your cue to hug and embrace that successful you standing in front of you. And the moment you hug and embrace them, you're going to give yourself, you're going to feel, you're going to notice this instantaneous visceral shift in your body where you will begin to align your feeling state with theirs, where you will begin to vibrate at the frequency of theirs, where you will sit like them, you will think like them, you will breathe like them, you will become them in every sense of the word. Not having to understand how this is going to happen, but just give yourself that gift because you can. So in a moment, I'll count from one to three. When I get to three, you hug and you embrace them. And I want you to hold on to them until they instruct the release. Starting with the number one, in your mind's eye, standing up, looking the version of yourself directly in their eyes. Two, feeling that excitement, both of you knowing what is about to occur. Three, hugging and embracing, feeling that immediate shift in the way that you breathe. You begin to breathe in alignment with them. You begin to sit, come on, you begin to sit and your posture shifts. Your facial expressions begin to align. I'm going to count up from the numbers one to 10. Each increasing number, you align more and more and more of your energy, more and more of your attitude, more and more of your behavior, more and more of your breath with him or her. And by the time we get to the number 10, it will be complete union, complete alignment, feeling completely in alignment with the most successful you here now, starting with the number one, like this volume valve, turn it up. You can take it all the way today. We don't have to wait any longer to feel it in your breath. Come on. Feel it in your breath. Taking up the space. Owning your power. Leveraging your power. Three. Feel it in your facial expressions. Perhaps you begin to smile. Four. Come on. Feel it in your thoughts. You are quite literally creating new neural pathways in your brain right now. Five. Turn it up. Turn it up. Six. Come on. Seven, all the way today, because you can. Eight, feeling that excitement. Nine, bring it together. Bring it together, complete union. Ten, complete union. You can release that hug now. Looking at your equal. Looking at your equal. And take a moment. And as you look at your equal, just take a moment and thank him or her. Thank them for whatever you want to thank them for. Because whatever you are thankful for, you create more. Thank them for their courage, their patience, their earnest desire to grow, to love, to be compassionate. Thank them for whatever you want to thank them for. Doing that now. And whenever you are ready, I want you to give them one final hug, kiss them on the cheek, tell them you freaking love them. and then releasing the image of them from your mind's eye. Coming back to the way that you feel now. Noticing the shift in your feeling state. And this feeling state is now anchored in your nervous system. It's now anchored in your subconscious mind and it's going to influence the rest of your life, whether you believe it or not. And that's the power of creating and rewriting the script of the subconscious. Give it some time and you're going to notice a massive shift in your physical reality and everything that you attract. But we have to be willing to come back to this, to come back to this, to ground this feeling state. Now that we are here, I want you to take a moment as you are energetically vibrating as the most successful you, take a moment and project into the rest of today what is the rest of today going to look like as you show up as the most successful you? What does it look like uh, once you open your eyes until you go to bed? Just doing that projection now. And once you've completed that for today, where you see yourself having conversations, you see yourself uh, eating food, you see yourself driving home. Once you've done that for today, do that for tomorrow and the rest of the week. I'll give everybody 30 seconds to do so now.
last 15 seconds here. Releasing any image or vision that came up for you and coming back to your feeling state. And are you willing to turn up the intensity even more? Busting it through from 10 out of 10 to 11 out of 10. Can you give that to yourself now? Now, in a moment, I'm going to count up from one to four, and I'm going to intentionally leave out the number five. And with each increasing number I count, you're going to feel more awake, more alive, you're going to remember where you are, what we're doing, and then I'm going to quiet myself at four. And then it's going to be up to you, in your mind's eye, you say it to yourself, to say the number five. And when you say the number five, your eyes will gently open up. But you're only going to say the number five when you are ready to show up as the most successful you here now. So when I get to four, I will shut my mouth. And then you will say five to yourself. And it might be right away. It might be five seconds. It might be 15. It might be 50. It's not for you to decide, it's for you to just feel and to give it to yourself. But once you open your eyes, you're going to feel wide awake and you're just going to move your body in whatever way feels natural from being in this radiant, confident state. And being in this radiant, confident state, you don't care what anybody thinks about you, you just feel good. You don't have to think about how you move, you just move, there's no right or wrong. I'll be moving right along with you. And we'll begin that count up in just a moment, starting with the number one, coming back to your body. Two, feeling less relaxed, more stiff and rigid. Like this electricity now pumping through your body. Three, feeling that excitement, that nervous excitement, perhaps. Four, and whenever you are ready, you can open your eyes and then you can move. Stretch, if you want to box, if you want to dance, if you want to squat, if you want to do some push ups, come on, help me. Just a little bit here, not long. and intensity. <clears throat> Repetition in that the more you do it, the better you get at embodying him or her. Repetition in that the more you do it, the longer you are able to maintain in that feeling state. Uh, there, again, everyone has different skill sets. There's some people who can tap into it energetically, be there for a few moments, kind of like what we did now, and then stay there for, the, for months and months and months and months, and then something will 
happen to them or they'll just get used to that so it's not gonna feel as cool anymore. Um, and then there's other people like myself where it, it comes in and goes so that the repetition serves me tremendously. And then intensity, intensity is paramount where uh, like we're coming back to this idea of, of allowing yourself to be entirely delusional as you embody this, this amazing version of yourself and the, the more intense you can, you can make that, that shift, the longer it's going to last. If it's just like uh, just like a little drop in a bucket, you're not gonna notice much, but if you just throw in a bunch of water in that bucket, you'll, you'll definitely notice it. So when it comes to repetition and intention, uh, a couple ways that I look to, to guide uh, in, in regards to the clean up, tune up, act up process. You can quite literally just guide yourself through that. It helps to have some guidance just to get familiar with kind of like what we just did here, which is very, very good that you guys made it here. But you can give yourself that same experience, clean up, tune up, back up, by closing your breath, releasing, visualizing that 2.0 you, and you can take yourself through that process that I just took yourself, that I just took you through, where you, you say to yourself, I'm going to hug and embrace them. Once I do that, I will feel an immediate visceral shift. You can quite literally take yourself through that process. Or you can just notice the images, the visions that come up, the feelings that come up, and that in and of itself, you shift your focus so you begin vibrating a little bit differently. And then you open your eyes and then you go you move your body, you make the call that you feel inspired to make, you create the piece of art that you feel inspired to create, you make the offer that you feel inspired to, to make to a business partner. Um, you can do that twice, like uh, you can carve out five to 10 minutes in the morning five to 10 minutes in the evening. That serves tremendously. What I love to do, because I'm perhaps a little bit more of an obsessive mentality and I just like repetition, repetition. What I like to do, and this serves me tremendously, um, is I set a timer on my phone. It can go off every hour on the hour. Just like once it goes off, repeat. Once it goes off, repeat. And it reminds me to go through this clean up, tune up, act up process. And I go through this process in like a, two to 10 second window, depending on what's going on in that moment. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to release, but I'm trying to get through it as fast as possible and focus more so on the repetition than on the intensity. But if I'm carving out five to 10 minutes in the morning or the evening, it's all about intensity. It's all about intensity. But the hour that goes off every hour, I might be um, on my laptop doing some work, creating something. I turn it off if I'm hopping on a phone call um, so it doesn't, distract me there. <clears throat> but when it goes off, just hit repeat, pause, visualize. It's an instantaneous energetic upgrade and it then will influence the rest of my entire day. Um, let me take a couple breaths here to see if there's anything else that I want to add um, before we wrap this up. that you're in is far more important 
in the actions that you do. Questions, curiosities, uh, things they would like to share. Yes, ma'am. to 
allow my transcendent self to merge with my authentic self and be and just become present and um, I mean I've been practicing this for a long time and like I say there's no end to the becoming part of it so um, it's brought just a lot of joy for no reason at all do you just out of curiosity not looking for anything in particular do you feel like there's any humans walking around who have gone to the end that have gotten to the end or the end of what the end of the, the becoming where they are all all of it